Hello and welcome back to Warcraft Daily for today, the 4th of July 2014. So to the American people, um, have a happy independence majigger thing and uh, don't get yourselves killed. So then, in today's news, we have actually a few really interesting things. So Rob Pardo's actually left Blizzard. We have a new ultra cute pet. We've got the uh, the cross realm AH or the cross faction AH stuff going on. And then we have a little bit of a blue post about Rook Strike and just some beta iteration. I thought it was actually worth talking about even if you're not a warrior. So first of all, Rob Pardo is gone. He has left the Blizzard. If you don't know who he is, basically he came on in 1998 to help with StarCraft. Um, yeah, so he came in then. I think, was he Blizzard North? Oh, geez, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, he's one of the old crowd at Blizzard. He's been there for 17 years and he finally decided to, um, you know, call it quits and leave. So we gave the usual spiel about, you know, loving work and the creative minds of Blizzard and all that stuff. And he said that he didn't, uh, he, yeah, he didn't have any immediate plans other than uh, just to enjoy the summer with his family and get in some more game time. Now then, that's, that's basically what's happened. So I suppose thank you to Rob Pardo. He, you know, was involved in a lot of great projects. He was the lead designer for World of Warcraft and uh, the Burning Crusade. So two very iconic things are basically his baby. Quite, a, quite an important guy, and he was actually one of the main designer guys for Warlords of Draenor, however I'd imagine that most of the design of Warlords is done. So, let's, uh, let's try to get some analysis out of this, even though I personally don't think there's a great deal of analysis to get. Right, he said that he has no plans. This has meant that a lot of people think that he was fired. Um, is that true? Is that false? I do not know. It certainly, you know, wouldn't be crazy to hear of one of the old-time people kind of getting forced out of the company, but... It seemed like Rob Pardo had his hand in a lot of different things, and, like, he was one of the, like, the big guys, you know, at Blizzard. I don't, I just, I don't know, I find it hard to believe that he was fired. Um, and especially because, like, a lot of people are saying, oh, it's Bobby Kotick striking again. That, I, I don't really think that's true, because Blizzard, sure, they are Activision Blizzard, but Blizzard, the game developer, is actually relatively autonomous from Activision. They don't really... I mean, sure, they're in cahoots because they're the same parent company, but, like, Activision Blizzard is the overall thing. Blizzard Entertainment is still its own, like, separate company that can function by itself, nearly. Um, so, yeah, I don't think he was fired, but I suppose he could have been fired. I'm not really 100% sure why. A lot of people have said that he may have been fired because of the recent Polygon article. This is something that I haven't really talked about, but, um, you know, it's, it's the sort of whole thing where you just don't want to... Often, if you're a YouTuber, you know, getting involved with some sort of, like, sexism thing is just not fun. Basically, Rob Pardo, or it wasn't sexism, it was... Right, I'll, I'll give you a quick little overview. So, Rob Pardo was giving a talk in MIT at the, uh, I think it was the Creative Media Lab, about just game design and what Blizzard had done, and he kept on talking about emphasizing epic experiences. And someone asked him about, you know, like, LGBT characters having more prominent women roles and various things like that. And um, he basically just said the Blizzard are there to make, you know, fun games. They don't really want to get involved with social commentary. He acknowledged that they've had problems with the female characters because, well, his saying was they all grew up in comic books. So they, when they went, you know, when they grew up and, and made games, they sort of made comic bookish characters um, and all that stuff. Now, that, of course, happened roughly around the same time as the whole, that big hashtag Twitter campaign thingy. Um, yeah, so it was a bit of a mess, honestly. I personally don't think that's why he was fired, honestly. P execs say dumb shit all the time. And honestly, I think that the Polygon article was absolutely blown out of the water. Um, or the guy writing it absolutely blew it out of the water. He was the kind of, you know, person who just tries to get over offended with everything and sling mud instead of actually trying to have a, you know, a reasonable discussion like an adult. So, basically, yeah, Rob Pardo, I think he didn't do that bad. He just said Blizzard didn't really want to bother with, or, you know, do any of that stuff. Um, because they just want to make gameplay. And he at least acknowledged that they've struggled with female characters. Now, that's something that I think Blizzard could definitely do a better job of. And, of course, I'm pro-diversity, obviously, because guess what? The human race is diverse. If you're make, it's like, it's not a statement to reflect your species in the game that you make, is it? No, it's not. Um, so, yeah. Now, that said, they don't really tackle sexuality in much of a way in World of Warcraft. I mean, sure, um, some characters might be married or, you know, have a wife or kids or something like that, but it's never really an outright part of the game. Well, it usually just sort of focuses on, oh shit, Elden and Arthas and friends are trying to kill us, let's go. And honestly, they've been doing a pretty good job with Jaina and various characters like that. So, I think Blizzard are getting better. 
Um, and yeah, that thing is, in my opinion, absolutely not why Pardo's left. Um, also, I think a reason why he could have left voluntarily is because he spent 17 years at this company. You know, he wants to maybe sort of branch out and do something new. He's a game designer, he's 40, you know, he's sort of entering that second half of his career. And a lot of guys like that have left their big company that they helped start and they've went and done their own thing. He's a rich man, a very rich man. You know, he can, he's basically got autonomy. He can do whatever the hell he wants. But usually people would leave a company, say that they have a project coming that they're not really going to talk about. However, he did say that he didn't really have any plans. So it's really, it's hard to say exactly what's going on. But honestly, it's none of our business. And frankly, I don't really give a crap. You know, like Pardo was involved in great things with the game. He sort of stepped back from now a little bit. Now he's left the company. So what? That's, that's the thing that happened. Let the guy move on and let's not just try to you know, overanalyze things that probably aren't there. Okay, so next is an ultra cute pet. This was teased by Jonathan LeCraft, who is um, one of the guys who does crafting. Now, I don't know if his actual surname is LeCraft, but if one of the guys who is involved with the in-game crafting surname is actually LeCraft, then, like, was he, he's, he's born for the job, wasn't he? Um, yeah, so it's this uh, little molten corgi. It's, it's really cute awesome and I'm gonna get one and yeah you can see a picture of that in the screen and uh yeah go go get that I don't know where it's going to be but I want it so with that said let's talk about the cross realm or cross faction I've done that twice in this video and uh, yeah the cross faction auction house I think this is great actually and um, now some people have said you know ah lore wise I don't know what I think about that eh okay maybe there's lore problems but do you know what's more important the gameplay you know and that sort of thing Blizzard actually said that one of the main reasons why they've done this is because there are a lot of, like, there's a lot of um, servers where maybe you have 80% Alliance, 20% Horde, and for the Horde people, they can't really make auction house money because they're just not a big economy. So by merging all these things, it should be better. And actually, if they're merging all these realms together with the, the connected thing, and then they're merging the auction houses of both factions, it should create a more vibrant economy, and I think that really is extremely important for the game. And if you want a lore justification, just say, right, that uh, the, the Steam Weedle cartel of goblins have just kind of infiltrated the whole thing, taken it over, maybe there's some dirty deals. Maybe Auctioneer Chilton is actually a corrupt official. And uh, yeah, you could use that actually as a, an excuse to fire Tom Chilton from the company. But yeah, there, that's what's going on. I think it's really good actually. It should help me make more money and I'm happy about that because I love money. It means I can buy cool mounts and things in game which would be nice. All right then, finally, we have uh, we have to talk about Heroic Strike and some beta stuff. This is just a big post, and right now, let's just say that Warriors are... bollocksed, I think is, is probably the right word to describe Warriors in the in the beta at the minute. So, right now, they I think they've removed Fury, or not, <laughs> they're not removed Fury, no, they, they removed Heroic Strike, and I've done a few little things which have screwed up Fury. Now, I don't claim to know much about Fury. I've been playing ARMS on my Warrior for the longest time because I've been PvPing, even though I know ARMS is by far the easiest spec to play for a Warrior. Anyway, so I think it was uh, it was either Watcher or Lore, someone anyway, posted on the beta forum saying, Fury Warriors currently have four buttons with some sort of flavor of deal X percent weapon damage to the target. One of them generates rage, two of them have a base cost of 30 rage, two of them are only usable sometimes, one of them is off the global cooldown, but these are um, sort of nuances at the base level. This is a significant amount of overlap. In the next build, we um, have a change... Actually, no, I'll talk about that a bit later. Right, so... Basically, your main kind of rage spenders and things like that are being changed up. They've removed Heroic Strike. And I think this actually really does suck. And this is my major concern with the button bloat. It was fine for some specs, but bringing a, uh, like, a, the Fury Warrior down to three main sort of rotation buttons instead of four, I think sucks. Because those nuances, if they are sort of extrapolated upon or, you know, built upon, can actually really make those spells feel unique. And I know this may is this maybe not uh, is particularly relevant but i've been playing an enhancement shaman now i honestly don't know really what i'm doing but i know that i've got a lot of really low cooldown melee spells and when you get down to it right they're all similar enough you know you just deal x damage to your target but one of them will spread my lava dude thingy to other things one of them will explode my lava things and other things one of them gives me a buff you know there's all these tiny little small differences 
but it means that I'm always sort of mashing buttons, but I need to think about what buttons I'm mashing, right? And that fits with the fantasy of being a Fury Warrior. You know, you're getting so much rage, you don't know how to spend it, and your task as a player is just to spend it as efficiently as possible by using all your abilities on cooldown and bashing the clean shite out of your opponent. That is what is supposed to feel great about a Fury Warrior, and if they start removing buttons from that, I am honestly very worried that the sort of fantasy of that isn't going to be as good. I think that in terms of raw gameplay thing as well, there's a difference between... That I think right now the main spender is Wild Strike, so just sitting there spamming Wild Strike. That feels different to spamming Wild Strike and Heroic Strike as kind of like an extra burn of Rage, and I think there may be a little bit of nuance lost there. Um, overall, look, I'm just a little bit sad about it. Um, there, there's definitely a lot of work to be done, though. Um, they actually said that in the next build, they have changes to Wild Strike, which will reduce the global cooldown. Um, for, or the, yeah, the cooldown for the spell, so that it will allow you to basically use Wild Strike as more of an excess rage sort of remover thingy majig. And apparently, this is going to keep up the frantic pace, which, pace, um, which defines Fury from arms. So, here's my problem with that, right? Uh, let's just say I've got Wild Strike bound to three and I've got too much rage. Well, that's fine. I use my one and two, you know, my, my other sort of main damaging spells. And then, how do I spend more rage, or, you know, really burn rage? I just sit there tapping three, just tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. Boring. Boring, 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 boring. You know, we want maybe four buttons, so I can, I'm tapping three, and then maybe I can throw in an extra heroic strike if I really need to get rid of some rage. I've got a bit more of a choice there. There's more gameplay, there's more buttons to hit, but in a way that actually involves a bit of a decision being made. I think that really what's important about the, the sort of squish is they need to think, is the player making a decision to use a spell um, that's sort of meaningful, and, uh, you know, if, if they are, then keep the spell. And honestly, I think Heroic Strike was probably doing that. Um, he also said that without Heroic Strike, Bloodthirst would be your cl uh, clear Rage Builder, Raging Blow would be your most efficient spender when it's usable, and Wild Strike would be your filler. That just sounds like an ultra-boring three-button boring thing. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, it just sounds dull, honestly. Now, another problem with Warriors at the minute is ARMS. ARMS has just been lobotomized. That's, I think, the best way to describe the current state of ARMS. I'm not really going to talk about it because they do have some significant changes coming, I hope. Um, I think they're adding Rand back in and doing a few little things with that. So we'll have to see how ARMS goes, but overall, I'm just a tad concerned about one or two things that are going on with the Warrior, and in fact, I know a lot of Warriors are. There's been a very large thread on the beta forum um, just full of concerned Warriors. So hopefully Blizzard don't balls this stuff up too badly. Now, they also, in this post, talked about beta stuff, just saying that it's all a process of iteration and that it's, you know, the reason why something is broken now is so that it can be fixed in a few builds time. And that's ideally what's going to happen. So if you're a warrior not in the beta, then obviously um, there's not much you can do about it in terms of feedback. And you don't have much to worry about, in my opinion, because I think the Blizzard will end up fixing this stuff if player feedback from the beta people is good enough. And hopefully it will be because the warriors are kind of up in arms. And if you are a company, the one thing you don't want is a band of angry warriors outside your office with their axes wanting your head. All right then, so that's basically it for the day's news. Um, we've got uh, Sans Pardo, Nice cute pet, faction auction houses, and a heroic strike being removed, sad face. So anyway, that was fun. And I know that I don't really do these WoW Daily videos as much anymore. Just the reason for that is because Warlord's content sort of, it prioritizes like just doing one video to show off one feature. It's sort of nice and split and com um, compartmentalized. Well, when we get a bunch of blue posts and little small bits of news, I think it just fits this format well. And really that's what I'm going to be using this format for until the game comes out. And once Draenor comes out, I'll be able to start up Warcraft Daily in its sort of original incarnation. That honestly, only about half of you probably remember. Anyway, that's it for today's show. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.